This is the Lou Rockwell Show. Well, the state and the power elite have really done it to us this time. The dollar plummeting, unemployment increasing, businesses going bankrupt, banks going under, and we're all worried about what the future holds. What an honor and a pleasure today to have with us Bert Blummert. Burton S. Blummert, giant of the of the the coin and the precious metals industry, a giant of libertarianism too, as uh, chairman of the Mises Institute, as uh, president of the Center for Libertarian Studies, and as publisher of LouRockwell.com. And for 50 years, Burt uh, was in the coin and precious metals business. Uh, he's now retired, or pretty much retired. Uh, but Burt, how about starting out? You know, what what were the customers like 50 years ago as versus today? Well, first of all, let me uh, tell you how much I appreciate talking to LouRockwell.com people. They are indeed the very, very best people. So happy to be here. Uh, in the old days, uh, we preface so many things in the old days, uh, gold was difficult. For, for one thing, you couldn't even find out the price of gold. It wasn't easy to do. Uh, today, you, you can watch uh, the economic apparatus around the world collapsing 24 hours a day, in high definition on television. We were selling a, a, a concept. Uh, the Swiss always recommended 5 to 10% of one's net worth uh, in, uh, held in gold. And we were dealing with people like that, just trying to introduce them to the subject. That gold was money, that if the dollar one day, it was theoretic, it was an abstraction, if the dollar one day was, was not good, you should have gold. Today, there's no longer a profile of the kind of fellow who we sell gold to people. Everybody buys gold. Hedge fund, hedge fund managers buy gold. People who work for the IRS buy gold. So in that regard, uh, it's a very different audience that we're dealing with. You know, it's, it's, it's thrilling. And, of course, like you, I, uh, I uh, wish that everybody listening to us would have some gold they would hold. Bert, if somebody, somebody you know, has not owned gold and silver before, but is worried about, obviously, what the Federal Reserve and the rest of the government is doing to the economy. What do you do? I mean, what should you seek to buy? How should you seek to hold it? Uh, tell us about gold and silver. Well, uh, let's talk about the essential, just the basics that have really are unchanging. For example, never uh, use borrowed money to buy precious metals. Uh, when, when I say gold, it's, it's the same for silver and platinum, etc. But don't leverage positions. Don't do, uh, gee whiz, if gold is such a good investment, why don't I go ahead and buy some futures, future contracts? Uh, getting $10 worth of gold for, uh, for a dollar, uh, that's a serious mistake. Make sure you use your own money, your own savings to buy gold. Secondly, uh, take possession. Take, uh, you, your interview with Mark Fulton the other day was very interesting. And, of course, you were right, and Mark was right. You take physical possession of what you buy. Uh, people say, well, gee whiz, Merrill Lynch, uh, they're so reliable. And uh, I, I, I used to tell people that yeah, the Soviet Union went out of business. So there's no such thing as an, uh, any, any place that's safe. You maintain as much control over your physical metals as you can. Uh, don't trade the position. Uh, you, you buy gold at uh, $900 an ounce, and your timing is lucky, and it goes up to $1,000, and gee whiz, maybe I should take a profit. Uh, buy it back cheaper. That, of course, is called trading. Um, most of our clients, or at least through the years, don't need that. They're getting too old for that. You know, trading is fun, but don't. this is your savings. View it as an extension of your savings. Don't trade your savings. Uh, which items do you buy? That's a really a very, very the easiest of all. You buy the item that is the most active, actively traded. Uh, in gold, it's the Kruger Rand, the one ounce Kruger Rand, the Canadian Maple Leaf, the American Gold Eagle. Uh, in silver, the products are the American Silver Eagle or the Junk Silver Coinage or Morgan Morgan and the piece of silver dollars. Buy what is actively traded. Don't fool items that are unknown in the market. Uh, where do you store the stuff? Well, that each person has to decide themselves. Safety deposit boxes are reasonably safe. Uh, there's two kinds of crooks out there. There's the private market crooks and the government crooks. Uh, the, the safety deposit box protects you against 
the uh, private crooks, free market crooks, or whatever. Um, the government, of course, has access, I suppose, to any of these institutions. So it, it depends on your circumstances. Uh, spread your risk, as Mark Thornton indicated. Uh, have something here and something there, and uh, do the best you can to maintain it yourself. Bert, you know, I finally have the chance to ask you the question that has always bugged me. Why is junk silver called junk silver? After all, when you see these coins, it's true they're circulated. They're not numismatic coins, but they're still very beautiful, the uh, circulated Morgans or, or uh, silver quarters or dimes or half dollars. Where did it get the name junk silver? Well, it was inherent in what you just said, that the fact that there was no uh, collector value. When you go back uh, to the early 1960s, these coinage, uh, these coins were still in circulation. Uh, they were being pulled out. And almost, people did it almost intuitively. But yet, they, so they distinguished between coins that had some collector or numismatic value, those that didn't, and sadly, they called it junk silver, uh, the coins that do not have any collector value. And what, uh, what's interesting is, as the price of the metals, uh, the gold and silver, get higher, uh, premiums uh, collapse on many, many of the old collectibles. For example, 25 cent pieces from the barber coins from the from the uh, last century, or even the century before that, uh, it worn uh, have no collector value, and are subject to uh, ultimately being melted down. So that's a bad name for some very, very good material, yes. Indeed. You know, Bert, Bert, we mentioned the numismatics, that is collector coins. Now, I like those, and I was a, was a coin collector even, even as a boy. But I wonder if uh, people who are interested in buying gold and silver and protecting themselves from the Fed, uh, they may have people who try to talk them into buying numismatics. What's your, what's your advice on that as versus uh, Krugerrands or, or uh, Maple Leaves? Well, I, too, am a collector for a lot of, most of my adult life. Still get goosebumps looking at those beautiful coins. But um, if uh, you're getting into a whole other area with collectibles, the sadly, there are dealers who, um, how shall I say it, use fear to sell the collectibles, telling folks that, gee whiz, these bullion coins are maybe uh, one day... Uh, confiscated by the government, so protect yourself by buying collector coins. This is a specious and dangerous argument. If you're inclined to be a collector, for example, a, a friend who has been a serious uh, stamp collector m much of his life, he became interested in coins. For him, it was very natural to make the, the change, to make the bridge, to become uh, interested in his max. But I would say we used to have an adage uh, at my old company that if you had a, 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 a desire, a need to buy collector coins that you couldn't control, get them from us, you will lose your money slower than any place else. Uh, that's not much of a recommendation, but uh, unless you are a collector, prepare to invest the time and, uh, and acquire the knowledge, stick to the bullion coins. Bird, you mentioned the, some unscrupulous dealers might try to get people to, to buy expensive uh, numismatics versus uh, Krugerrands for their basic savings coins. Um, and talk about they would talk about confiscation, but what about confiscation? Do we uh, is that something we have to fear? It happened, of course, in 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 the 1930s under uh, the evil Franklin D. Roosevelt when he stole the gold from the American people, uh, much to the benefit of the government and of the special interests connected to Mr. Roosevelt. But um, do you think that if if that happened again, uh, would the government make the numismatic uh, circulating coin distinction? That they made in uh, in 1933. Well, the essential difference uh, between uh, there are many differences, but uh, the one difference is that in uh, the 1930s, gold was money. So what they were doing is they were remonetizing you know, or demonetizing. Gold is not money day-to-day uh, uh, -day money today. It's class. It's uh, uh, money uh, according to Mises and Hayek and Rothbard, but not money uh, circ circulating money. So that um, this would just be, I mean, these, these are bad people. They can confiscate your living room furniture. But I don't personally think that they're going to be bothered. It's such a small group of people that own gold and hold it, that I just don't think it's important to, uh, to worry about that. Certainly not 
and one could make the case, well, if they're going to confiscate gold and I would be a criminal, quote, unquote, to hold it, I shouldn't buy it. That's a very, very poor argument. So, yes, there are risks in holding some gold. They could tax it. Uh, they could uh, ridicule. Uh, you're a gold bug. There's something wrong. With you. you own a share of IBM. You're a patriot. You have an ounce of gold. There's something wrong with you. That's a risk that you can take. So, yes, there, there are risks, but it's, there's also a greater risk not holding gold and silver, in my judgment. Bert, uh, I certainly agree with you. So somebody wants to buy gold and silver, they'd like to like to protect themselves in that way. Who do they buy it from? Well, that's a very difficult question uh, today. In the old days, again, that's the third time I refer to the old days, uh, many cities, uh, even smaller American cities of 40 and 50,000 people, had their local coin shop. The first place that I would look, I would, I mean, it's always good to be able to talk to someone uh, directly, face to face, get in there and talk to the guy. Uh, if there's a coin shop close by, if you have a choice, uh, just uh, go in and visit with people. Uh, you don't have to be now. There's an element of luck. You try to get to the principal of the company. Uh, he's the right fellow. It's not easy sometimes to accomplish that. But if you can, uh, go in a few times and make a small purchase. Uh, if you can get to know him, those are good guys. They've survived. It may, it, presume it that they've been around a while. Uh, I know hundreds of dealers around the United States who fit that bill. And none of them are too big, uh, almost, well, to, to talk to the small buyer. Because, I mean, uh, if a youngster comes in and wants to buy a silver dime and he wants to pay you a, a, a twenty for it, uh, it's an important commitment for the dealer to make. Most of them are okay. Thanks to that, failing a local coin shop, these coin shows that take place in usually mid, mid-size or major cities, they're excellent places for a, a, a potential customer to go around, talk to the folks, try to get somebody, uh, talk about lourockwell.com, mention my name, uh, you'll find a dealer who is, shares all of you, and many of them do. Ron Paul is a great friend to the coin industry, and uh, a lot of the dealers uh, respect to the small customer as well. So try to get to know someone. If you're a significant customer, you're shopping. If you want to buy 100 ounces of gold, that's almost $100,000 these days, uh, call around, call me. I'll, I'll chat with them too and make sure that they, uh, the best recommendation, of, of course, is, uh, uh, is the fellow's the bank. Uh, if the dealers have been around a while and you're going to send him money and you're not sure, Call the bank. They, they can't give you a lot of information, but you can learn something about a dealer. So I used to say, if you want to know about um, Bert Blummer as a dealer, call his wife or his bank. Uh, I always preferred that they call the bank, always. So that's, that's good. Try to get to know a dealer. Try to get to, uh, get to a coin show. Some of the trade publications are good as well. The coin World and the Numismatic News, these are available in many uh, newsstands. News around and and if you can't find me you can check them out online that's another good source and read lourockwell.com <laughs> there's a lot of good material there as well bert thanks very much in mentioning uh, the website you know not only is bert a pleasure to listen to uh, he's a pleasure to read take a look at his archive bert ness blummert on the uh, on lourockwell.com look under columnists and by the way the mises institute is going to be publishing uh, a collection of his essays called the libertarian essays the Humor and Politics of Bert and S. Blummert. So, uh, Bert, we'll have to talk to you when your book comes out, and I hope you'll also come back to talk to us more about what's happening to the economy and the ever-important subject of protecting yourself by owning some precious metals. Lou, it is, thank you very much, and it's always a pleasure to talk to your readers. Always my pleasure. Thank you very much. Bert, let me just add, on behalf of all the thousands and thousands of people uh, over the last 50 years whom you've helped protect from the Fed, and the depredations of the state in general through ownership of precious metals. I just want to say thank you. Thank you very much. You've been listening to The Lou Rockwell Show, produced by LouRockwell.com, the best-read libertarian website in the world. If you'd like to advertise on this podcast or on the website, email advertise at LouRockwell.com. And thanks for listening.